So I review, unbox, and take a look at a ton of sneakers over here on the channel. Out of all of the sneakers that I've reviewed, unboxed, and taken a look at recently, here are the seven that have stood out. Starting off with one of the biggest no-brainers, it's the Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Found. This is a really interesting one. Obviously, the Jordan 1 Chicago being the most iconic and sought-after Jordan 1 colorway. He's released in November last year. Even now, people who took an L on that retail release either decided to bite the bullet and just pay resale for the sneaker, or are begrudgingly trying to forget about the sneaker altogether. I'm one of those who sadly took an L on the release of the Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Found, but honestly, I think that this sneaker kind of dropped at the perfect time. The hype of the Jordan 1 model has been on the decline, meaning this sneaker would have been a lot more expensive a couple years ago than it is currently. Now, granted, there is other factors to that, and this sneaker is still reselling for double the retail price. But when you take into account that this is the cheapest Jordan 1 Chicago colorway that you can find, it doesn't seem too bad. I think there's a lot of people people who are predicting that the Lost and Founds are going to be going up in price to kind of match the rest of them. And I can definitely see that happening in the next few years. Now, some people are also placing their bets on the upcoming Air movie, boosting sales for Jordan 1s in general, but specifically the Chicago colorway. Now, potentially all of that could be true. I don't know. But what I do know is that the Jordan 1 Chicago Lost and Found has currently flatlined in terms of its resale price. So I think it's probably one of the best times to pick this pair of sneakers up. And I think you are getting a super special and well done Jordan 1 for for that price. Next up is the final installment from a very solid collaboration between Adidas and Bad Bunny. This is the Bad Bunny Forum Buckle Low. And man, I really like these things. These dropped in December last year, and like I said, this is the final Forum Buckle Low from Bad Bunny and Adidas. It's the fifth colorway to drop of this model, and in my opinion, the cleanest. Now obviously that's more subjective, but this one being just pretty much platinum white with some gray accents, it definitely makes it one of the most wearable colorway. And currently, it's actually the cheapest colorway that you can get of this collaboration. I think because this one had the most stock. But this is definitely a sneaker I can see creeping up in price, joining the rest of the colorways. And this one, like I said, being the most wearable and versatile out of the bunch, it's definitely a great way to go if you are interested in this model. Essentially, this sneaker takes everything that people love from the regular forum low and just dials it up to 100. I mean, it's got some incredible materials. It feels really great quality in hand. There's a bunch of extras that you get in the box. And with all of that, they managed to keep the price down relatively low. I think whatever Bad Bunny and Adidas decide to do in the future, it's going to be very tough to beat the forum low buckle. It's an incredible pair of shoes that I'm a huge fan of. This next one is one of my absolute favorites, and it actually kind of surprised me, and that is the Huff Nike Dunk Low San Francisco. These dropped in November last year, and I think because of the oversaturation of dunks in general, these haven't really moved much in price. Now, I will say that over that period of time, they have slowly been creeping up. Currently, they're sitting at about 200 pounds on the off to market. But honestly, I think this is one of the best dunks that have recently released. I mean, every time I chuck these things on foot, it just reminds me how glad I am that I pulled the trigger on these. I mean, these look incredibly clean on foot, and just as a collaboration, I think they absolutely nailed this one. These celebrate 20 years of Nike SB and pay homage to the founder of Huff, Keith Huffnagel. There's a bunch of really cool small details like the San Francisco skyline, the Keith Forever embroidery, and the small silver Nike swoosh on the toe box. Definitely one of my favorite pairs of dunks that I just cannot stop wearing. All right, next up is a pair of shoes that you don't really have to worry about the resale price getting out of hand because I don't think it resells at all, but it's a pair that I just keep wearing over and over again, and the more I wear it, the more I like it. And that is the Represent Ascender. This is a pair of boots that I had no idea that I would like as much as I do. Now, obviously, it's winter, so I'm wearing them a lot more now as I probably will when it comes to summertime, but even so, this boot just goes so hard on foot. I think it looks absolutely insane, and it's also extremely well made. Covered in super heavy duty padded nylon material along with a whole bunch of really premium feeling tumbled leather. You've got some suede overlays in there and a massive protective rubber guard that moves around the top of the midsole. Obviously it's not going to be a pair of boots for everyone but I definitely wanted to mention this one because I am such a big fan of this pair of shoes. It's extremely well made and a lot of you guys were asking about this one. Alright moving over to something a little bit more fresh off of the release calendar. These things actually just released and that is the Jordan 4 Craft S. This is a pair of shoes that I knew I was going to like as soon as I saw those leaked images. That was way before the release of these things and now getting them in hand, yeah, it confirms it. I really like this pair of fours. I think this is just the perfect little sum and different that we needed in the Jordan 4 space. And I honestly think that these might end up being one of the cleanest Jordan 4s that we see this year. Obviously, we're right at the beginning, so we're gonna have to wait and see from what's to come. But as of right now, from what we know of what's dropping, these are one of my favorites. I think Jordan Brand did a great job with the materials. They obviously set 
set out to make a special edition Jordan 4, meaning that they're aiming to make this an elevated, more premium version of a regular Jordan 4. What they did was pretty much replace all of the plastic elements that you would find on a regular Jordan 4 and swapped it out for really nice leathers and suede. And I think when you combine all of those really nice materials and textures, you mix that with this colorway, it's just a perfect combination in my opinion. Now, in terms of the price on these things, currently they're not as low as I would have expected. These things are actually reselling for a decent amount of money. So if you are on the market for this pair of shoes, I'd probably give it at least a week or so until the prices start flatlining and that should be your opportunity to pick these things up if you did want to pick them up. All right, this one is a little bit more crazy, but man, I really like this pair. And that is the Mr. Bailey and Adidas Osmorphous. And this is really like the concept car of sneakers, but it actually exists. And it's just so different and interesting in terms of the way that they've paneled this sneaker and all of the materials included. This is actually the second collaboration that Adidas has done with Mr. Bailey. And the first one is pretty much non-existent. It released in such a limited amount, it's pretty much impossible to find. I'll tell you one thing, I definitely didn't expect to like it as much as I do. It's literally an all over black monochromatic pair of sneakers. Having such a simple colorway, they really elevated this perfectly with the use of different panels and textures to give it such an interesting look. You get a really premium unboxing experience, which you wouldn't really expect for a sneaker of this price tag. These only retail for 140 pounds. And something that's even more surprising is how comfortable they are on foot. These were relatively limited, so if you check out the resale price on these, they're sitting at about 200 pounds if you want to pick them up off of eBay or StockX. Even at that price point, I still think you're getting a good deal with this pair of sneakers. Alright, this next one feels like another no-brainer. It's the Jordan 1 High 85 Black and White. I will say that I kind of feel like this sneaker has been caught in a bit of an awkward spot. It's almost like on one hand you have the sneakerheads who were just sick and tired of seeing black and white panda sneakers. But then on the other hand you have people who are rocking and absolutely love pandas and are just kind of looking at this sneaker like what it's just a more expensive Nike Dunk High Panda. Now, obviously that's an oversimplification and generalization but there is definitely a lot of black and white sneakers out there. However most importantly it doesn't take away from how iconic this sneaker is. This is the first black and white pair of Jordan 1 highs for almost a decade. And obviously this being a Jordan 1 High 85, it's much more close to the original Jordan 1. Now because this is such a simple and wearable colorway, I can definitely see these things getting a lot more expensive over time. Now they literally just released today, so if you managed to get a W on that pair, congratulations. It's a solid, timeless sneaker to get in your collection. But with that being said, if you did take an L on this sneaker and you are looking towards the secondary market, I would give it at least a week or two for price it to kind of flatline and cool off. I think it's an incredible pair of Jordan 1s and I think it might be one of the best sneakers that we get this year. Obviously, we've got a long year ahead of us, so I'm not gonna fully put that in stone just yet. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah, guys, that is my top seven recent pickups and I think great sneakers to buy here in 2023. But if you want a deeper dive on some of those sneakers, those videos are right there.